Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Ripple has reported a substantial reduction in their sale of, of XRP a quarter over quarter from Q3 over Q2. We've seen also less volatility in terms of XRP price, and we've seen the distribution of XRP actually less than that of a Litecoin and Ethereum, and more in line with Bitcoin. I've got a chart to share with you on that in this report. It's from Ripple, of course, Q3 2019 XRP market report from just a couple, well, three days ago. And of course, this came out hours after I left. Left my city, went out of town to go visit friends over the weekend. Couldn't record any more videos. I had some videos out over the weekend that I recorded um, that day or the day of, just because I want to make sure that I had content uh, to, to have released. So I don't know if you know this, but with YouTube, you're able to like schedule future videos. So that, that's what I did anyway, because I want to make sure I had something out there. And um, and so this, of course, I leave town, and then about three hours later, I'm checking my phone, and damn it, the report that I've been waiting for, <laughs> it comes out, and I was like, oh, I can't recover this, and it covers until Monday. So here it is, though, Q3 2019 XRP Markets Report. All around awesome news. I want to share with you the data and, uh, and my opinions on this. Now, before we get going here, if you would, please delicately tap that like button. And if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, well, gosh darn it, we should be friends. Go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. It's not the worst idea. So here we go. Let's dive right in. Ripple publishes the quarterly XRP markets report to voluntarily provide unparalleled transparency and regular updates on the state of the XRP market, including quarterly programmatic and institutional sales updates, relevant XRP-related announcements such as Spring and RippleNet partnerships, and commentary on previous quarter market developments, which I, I love the comparisons, by the way. As an owner of XRP, Ripple believes proactive communication is part of being a responsible stakeholder. Moreover, Ripple urges others in the industry to follow its lead to build trust, foster open communication, and raise the bar uh, industry wide. So let me hop over the uh, ledger history. I don't think we need that for this video, but check out this subheading. This is glorious, and we did know this was coming. Decrease in XRP sales, because what have we seen from, uh, well, let's say, I would say this. What have we seen from a very small percentage of the XRP community and from a notable, maybe kind of high percentage of uh, Bitcoin maximalists from their community? We've seen Cry baby whining. No, I'm sorry. I'm just if you're one of the people that that disagreed on this, I don't mean to insult you. I'm just teasing. But uh, we we've seen people over the last few months talking about how uh, how Ripple has been selling XRP to an extent that it's actually suppressing the price of XRP. And I've I've and I've cited so many times on my channel and given actual facts as to why that's just. Absolutely incorrect. Here's some more of it. Check this out. So Ripple is, they actually have, over the last quarter, reduced their sales of XRP, but not because they were suppressing price. No, no, no. It's because they were, uh, they've always tracked to, to specific metrics. So I'm going to recover this here. And uh, they found more reliable data. They found a way to make that more precise. And so they're still tracking to particular metrics, fine, and that they should, that's smart because they don't want to suppress the, the, suppress the price of XRP. They want healthy XRP markets. Uh, but they want to do it as, you know, as, you know, spot on as possible, right? So as readers may recall from the previous quarterly report, Ripple publicly announced our intention to shift to a more conservative volume benchmark for our XRP sales. Away from coin market cap into crypto compare top tier, CCTT. And that's the name I can never freaking remember, but it's CCTT. Anyway. In the third quarter, we significantly reduced our XRP sales consistent with the messaging we shared in the Q2 report. For Q3 2019, our total XRP sales were $66.24 million versus $251.51 million in the previous quarter. That is a substantial drop. Uh, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 75% drop there. Uh, so I gotta tell you, they said it was going to be down. I didn't know it was going to be to that degree. And so I am impressed if that's where it needs to be in order to line up with the metrics that they're tracking that are important. Hey, I am all for it. They're responsible stewards of the XRP ecosystem. Thumbs up there. Anyway, um, per the Q2 report, our stated goal for programmatic sales for Q3 was approximately 10 basis points of the new volume benchmark, CCTT. 
And we ended up, I'm sorry, and we ended sales for the quarter below that 8.8 .8 BPS. So a little bit less, which is fine. Uh, anyway, in fact, partway through Q3, we decided to pause programmatic sales altogether and focus our over-the-counter OTC sales on a few strategic partners who are building XRP utility and liquidity in regions that are strategically important to our growing global business, including EMEA and Asia. Total sales, including OTC and programmatic, ended the quarter at 36 BPS of CCTT. And Brent Garlinghouse was talking in a recent interview about the whole idea of like when entities are coming to, to purchase large quantities of XRP, he said in many cases, typically what they've just been doing is referring them to, um, to, to other entities that offer XRP over the counter. Uh, because Ripple's not the only entity out there that has been selling uh, XRP over the counter. And technically, it's not Ripple's uh, legal entity. It's uh, XRP2 LLC, which is a registered money services business, which, of course, Ripple owns. But technically, it's that separate LLC. But nonetheless, that's kind of getting into the weeds. But, uh, but but there are other entities out there that can do it. And so they're, they're just, their whole stance was, why, why introduce, uh, if there's sufficient supply, why introduce extra XRP right now into the ecosystem? And I also reported recently, for those of you that aren't aware... XRP does have a roughly 30-year distribution plan for their holdings of, of XRP. And, and again, I always say this when I cite this, though, and there's a chart which I have covered on this channel, but don't hold them down to, like, exactly, it's not going to look exactly like that, but the point is, and they'll, they'll need to adjust it based on, you know, the metrics, metrics that they're tracking here in terms of how much XRP is released, but the point is, they do intend to get pretty much all the XRP out there, but it's going to be, they're taking a measured approach, and it's going to be over a very long period of time so as to not flood the market. Anyway, as a, as a result of this discipline, Ripple's XRP distribution, you guys got to hear this, check this out. Ripple's XRP distribution rate since the beginning of the quarter has been lower compared to the inflation rates of Ethereum and Litecoin and similar to BTC. And you can see the chart below. So for those of you that are not driving a motor vehicle, go ahead and look at the screen here. But if you are driving your car, you keep your hands on the wheel at 10 and 2, motorists don't become crashed into something right here. Um, and so here you can see XRP's the blue line, and look at that, gosh darn it. So for I'm sorry for all of you out there that say Ripple is suppressing the price of XRP. Now how you gonna act? How do you respond to this chart? Y'all feel silly not, don't you? That's just Moon Lambo's opinion anyway, but it's based on facts. Check out this, Q3 highlights, four bullet points. Number one. Ripple sold 66.24 million XRP in the third quarter of 2019, which is a 73.7% decrease in sales in XRP quarter over quarter, as measured in United States dollars. Two, overall market capitalization of digital assets decreased in Q3, with the overall market cap losing 30.4%. XRP price declined 35.4% quarter over quarter. Uh, three, three billion XRP were released out of cryptographic escrow. Uh, 2.3 billion XRP were returned to escrow. Um, so you can see it's like the, the vast majority, obviously. Uh, X, and then number four, XRP is now listed on over 140 exchanges worldwide. That is astonishing to me. And I, I'll tell you, when I entered the world of crypto, crypto in November of 2017, I am admittedly pulling from memory here, but I think XRP was only on about 50 exchanges. So... If that's correct, and I think it is, uh, nearly tripled in that time span, which is it's substantial. It's, it's very good for liquidity, especially as the crypto asset class continues to grow. And just don't forget, the, the, one of the biggest reasons this is important is that as um, Ripple Net corridors are built out, you need exchanges the world over to have sufficient XRP liquidity so that they can be used um, well, as on-demand liquidity, as, as actual liquidity pools, uh, formerly known as XRapid, but now it's just known as on-demand on liquidity, that has to be available in order for banks and financial institutions and remittance companies to utilize that technology to move money around the world. So this is fantastic. It's all being built out. And so let me scroll down here a little bit now. Let's say it's uh, looking to ahead to Q4. We will continue to monitor volume developments closely and intend to maintain a similar approach to Ripple's XRP sales as compared with uh, the third quarter, which is fantastic. So let's look at this. So in terms of the dollar sold, if they're always, uh, it always has to do with volume, which is super duper there. Now, speaking of volume, check out this subheading. CCTT's reported daily volume for XRP decreased in Q3 from the previous quarter. Uh, the average daily volume was $198.1 million in Q3 versus $429.51 million in Q2, 
though higher than uh, 156.01 million in the first quarter. And so I wanted to state this so you might think, oh gosh, oh no, XRP volumes down from Q3 over Q2. What is going on here? Well, don't forget that in the second quarter, there was the beginning of a massive rally, which um, the Bitcoin got up to what almost $14,000. Uh, XRP and the rest of the, the crypto asset class certainly did uh, respond to that type of price action. So of course, there's a lot more uh, a lot more volume then, and then the, sep- the, the, the quarter following, Q3, th- there was just less. So it's, I just want to be clear that when we're talking about a decrease in uh, in XRP's volume here, it's not as though there was something explicitly wrong sp- with XRP. It's it's just that uh, it's that the asset class as a whole, it was not as hot in the third quarter. I think that's fair to say. All right, uh, so volatility. Based on CCTT's report volume, XRP's volatility of daily returns over the quarter was 3.6% which is lower than the previous quarter's 5%. XRP's volatility was lower than that of other top digital assets, as Bitcoin's volatility of daily returns through Q3 was 3.9%, and Ethereum's was 4.3%, which I gotta admit, uh, in the world of crypto, doesn't sound like a whole lot, right? But uh, things will not stay like this. We don't know when the next parabolic price shift is going to occur, uh, but it's a comment, and that's not financial advice, just to be clear. Um, I just I <laughs> think that people just have not figured out this asset class yet, and as a result, people, you know, humans are going to do what humans do. They're going to speculate, and they're not going to know exactly what they're throwing money into them, at least some won't, and uh, it's going to result in ridiculous price action. I just, I don't think we're done with the, the nonsense in terms of crazy, uh, you know, Bitcoin, XRP, just crypto assets, volatility in general. No, we're near done. I don't think. Uh, I like that they highlighted this. I'm going to skip over. They, they talked a little about, a bit about escrow, but I don't think it's worth uh, jumping into that. Uh, spread of misinformation. I love this, though. They included this in the, using the word FUD. Last quarter, there was an uptick in FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and the spread of misinformation about XRP, especially around topics such as purported XRP dumping and price manipulation by Ripple. FUD is a tool typically used to undermine new technologies. But bam Due to the nature of digital asset markets, FUD runs rampant, often perpetrated by those with political or financial interests in certain cryptocurrencies. <laughs> Bitcoin maxis! Healthy dialogue, transparency, and pragmatism are vital to dispel misinformation, properly educate the market, and foster innovation in our industry. Though Twitter is not the only place where FUD persists, bots on Twitter, accounts with high indication of automated publishing activity based on Indiana University research, contributed to the propagation of FUD across the digital asset industry. They comprise 49% of the share of conversation about Bitcoin, 71% about ETH, and 50% about XRP, which indeed is fascinating information. In Q3, bots have been more active in conversations about XRP, with the number of unique bots rising and engaging in messages related to number one. Gotta love this. And we talked about this a lot over the last quarter, didn't we? FUD number one, dumping allegations. Oh, really burdens my biscuits thinking about this one. Two bullet points. Number one, a conversation from bots specifically about Ripple's dumping XRP and flooding the market increased 179% quarter over quarter. That would be largely thanks to Crypto BitLord and Crypto Media picking up the story and running with it. And also Yahoo Finance, and I can't remember if maybe Forbes jumped in too at some point, but there are a couple major just traditional news outlets uh, talking about this piece, which is just kind of mind-blowing. But anyway, bullet point two. Dumping allegations were the most common FUD topic of conversation in recent months compared to others. So here's the truth, and they have this in two bullet points. Fantastic. Conversation attempted to support the allegations by pointing to large movements of XRP, which were in fact transfers between Ripple Treasury and escrow management accounts. In other words, those transfers did not entail Ripple distributing XRP. Point number two. Critics further focused conversation on the fact that large XRP holders exist, referred to as whales. Large holders exist in many digital asset communities, such as Bitcoin and Ether. We do not see evidence that large holders of XRP are behaving materially different than Bitcoin or Ethereum whales. Then you've got this price manipulation. Nearly half, 49% of all conversations alleging Ripple made XRP price fall, came from bot accounts. Oh, how how big a surprise is that? The truth. Bottom line. Ripple cannot control XRP price. XRP is traded on a fully functioning and independent digital asset market, including over 140 exchanges, in which Ripple plays a very limited role. XRP exists independently of Ripple. The XRP ledger is a free, open-source, decentralized technology. Others can and do develop on it and use it. 
Ripple went away tomorrow, the ledger would continue to exist and XRP would continue to trade. As a stakeholder of XRP, Ripple is an interested party in its success. We are aligned with other XRP stakeholders and uh, focused on supporting a healthy XRP community here. Um, I'm going to talk more about on-demand liquidity in a different, uh, different video. I don't want this one to go on too long, so I'm going to skip over that for now. Other than that, they just kind of talk about Spring, which I've talked about a fair amount on this video, the concept of decentralized finance and other initiatives, including CoinMe. Um, they talk about regulatory clarity, and so I don't necessarily want to run through all of that. I really want to talk about uh, the stuff that really pertains specifically to the movement of um, XRP in terms of volume and price. And uh, I had to cover the part about the FUD because that, well, it's substantial, it does matter, and I, I know it's just a small minority trying to ruin the party, but still, it is what it is. Take a look at this tweet. I just wanted to share this real quick. This is from hbar underscore bull who tagged a bunch of people all up in here. Uh, including yours truly, Moon Lambo. It's a little picture. It says, Cheers to all the folks who do their own research in the age of information. Ignorance is a choice. I thought it was a perfect way to wrap up this video after reviewing straight-up facts from the Q3 2019 XRP Markets Report directly from Ripple. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate all the support, and I think you're a cool guy or gal. Do not buy or sell anything, because of anything that I say or write, that would be a very, very, very bad idea. Not a financial advisor here. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.